Hey guys, it is springtime and that means we're going to start bringing all our bearded dragons out of hibernation. It's early this morning. Our room that we're going to set up all our bearded dragons this year, it is a pig sty. It looks like we've been breeding pigs here. So we're going to get this thing cleaned up today, set up some bearded dragons, hopefully share with you some tips of how we set up our animals. So you guys check this out. Let's get to work. Okay, so now what we're gonna be doing is moving our dragons that are inside out here into these really big black tubs we have. So we just put some white paper on the bottom and then we put some of these really big tiles right underneath the lights. I think later we might put some branches on it. Just make sure that, you know, when you put branches in your dragon cages, make sure you don't put them too high. You don't want your dragons getting out, especially since these tubs don't have any lids on them. So we're going to remove these guys out of their hibernation bins. Put them into much bigger enclosures outside in our exotic breeding area. Oh, him. <laughs> yeah, come here, old buddy. <laughs> Can't have my hair, man. There you go. So we rearranged some stuff, straightened this room up really, really nice. Uh, this thing looked like a pigsty. <laughs> so um, anyway, we got our dragons here and they seem to be enjoying their basking spot. Uh, this one here, he enjoyed his a little too much. Clean up on oh, our spike. Let's see, these guys here, um, have looks like they're enjoying their super worms and uh, this guy here left us a present too so hey anytime you want to uh, make a reptile poop all you gotta do is clean your cage that's all it takes cleaning the cage that's the cure for constipation as soon as you clean a reptile cage they're gonna poop in it it's as if to say but sir you don't understand we can't live in a cage without poop in it so when it comes to breeding bearded dragons, dragons definitely have a unique uh, form of communicating with one another. So one of the things that you'll notice is the head bobbing of the male. His beard will turn black and he'll bob his head up and down. And then he will grab the female by the back of the neck. Now, when it comes to bearded dragon romance, there's not a lot of candy and flowers and soft music. It's a lot of biting until he sees this arm waving that shows him that the female is going to be submissive. And then once he sees that, her submissive arm waving, usually the male will mount the female for breeding. This afternoon we've been hearing a lot of digging and scratching and whatnot going on in our bearded dragon cage. And we noticed this one female, uh, she was really digging and scratching around. So we decided to put her in a separate box. We filled that box with a combination of soil, peat moss and all. So here's our little girl right here. And as you can tell, she is literally bulging at the seams here. And uh, so we think she's fixing to lay some eggs. Uh, we put her in here with this dirt and we will just leave her alone let her dig and scratch until she finds a suitable place and then she can go about uh, getting rid of those eggs so we're going to close her up and uh, let her do her thing all right so i'm about to mix up some vermiculite here now some of you guys have probably seen our old egg laying videos where we kind of show you how we go about mixing up vermiculite. Now, we like to actually incubate our eggs in a couple different things. Sometimes we use vermiculite like this. Uh, sometimes we use uh, perlite. Sometimes we use sphagnum moss. I actually have a preference for sphagnum moss, 
But for what we're mixing up today, we're going to be using vermiculite. So I got my scale laid out here. And the way we mix this up is going to be 50-50. In other words, it's going to be 50% vermiculite, 50% water by weight. So right now, this vermiculite is weighing uh, 7.25, uh, what is that, grams. Uh, actually, I'm going to change, yeah, 7.25. So what we're going to do, I need some water, other than my drinking water here, which I might end up having to use. I want to add the same amount by weight, which is 7.25, so I'm going to zero that out, and 7.25. Let's see where we're at, 4.25. What are we at now? 6.60. Now I'm going to use a sprayer because I don't want to go over it until I get to where I need to be. What did I tell you it was 7.25? Okay, so we're at 7.20. There we go. Now what we're going to do is just mix this by hand and uh, the consistency that you want your vermiculite for egg incubation, you don't want when you squeeze it like this, you don't want water dripping out. You see there's no water dripping. But what you want it to do is kind of clump together like that. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we got it about right. Like I say, we measure it out 50% water, 50% vermiculite. Now we're going to uh, open me up one of these boxes here. And we're going to put some eggs in this box to incubate. I'm going to go ahead. You can move that scale out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. And kind of finish mixing it up. Because we have got some eggs that we want to start incubating today. Anna, you want to show them what we found this morning? Sure. We don't really know how many we have quite yet, but these are very dragon eggs. Normally when they lay them, they're clumped and like stuck together, but for some reason they're all separated, which actually kind of makes it easier for when you're putting them in their box. You want to make sure that you don't rip them apart and tear up the eggs. So this actually does make it a little bit easier. I'm just surprised they're not clumped together like they normally are. So I guess that's okay. We have actually been waiting on this female to lay for a couple of days now. And um, she's not laid. She's been scratching for about a week. So we knew she was, she was getting pretty close. We were actually planning on a fishing trip today. Uh, we were gonna go to the lake and go fishing. And what ended up happening is uh, my wife got sick. So we ended up not going. And it worked out perfect because our eggs are now ready to come out. So one thing that we like to do, and I do highly recommend this, is to take some type of marking device and to mark the top of your eggs. Uh, that way you don't accidentally rotate them. So as we uncover each egg, we're just gonna make a little mark on that egg like so. And that way, if we drop one, we know which way to set it back up again. Now, let me go and answer my phone. We'll be back in just a moment. So we got our eggs and our vermiculite, and uh, we got that, uh, they're all partially uh, buried. We got 84% on our temperature here, and um, we got a little cup of water in here to keep the humidity up. Um, and that's pretty much it. It'll take a few days for these guys to, uh, to hatch, usually uh, roughly about eight weeks. So, um, we hope you guys enjoyed our video. Bearded dragons are a very popular animal. We love them here. And uh, we know a lot of people do because like our sticker right here says, women just can't resist a nice beard. If you guys enjoyed this video, how about give it a thumbs up? Please subscribe. Thanks for watching Cold Blood Creations here on YouTube, guys. Have a great one. Damn, boy, I was getting my dance on. Are you feeling? Yes.